Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, where last episode we just returned from the surface of the moon and now we have approximately a trillion science to spend. Uh, we returned home from surface of the moon, yes that is true, and we brought a moonstone back with us. Now I believe we checked mission control here, yes, because we want to do this. We want to get a communication satellite in orbit of the moon so that we can send back the data that we are getting there. Now we could definitely grab aerodynamics here and we may as well fill that out. We're going to need to upgrade the R&D station to be able to go a little a little further, but that is I think completely worthwhile. That will cost quite a lot, but we're going to get that upgraded to level 2 and that's perfect. So we're going to hop in here and we're definitely going to grab heavier rocketry to get access to the mainsail. There we go. And precision propulsion I don't think is super necessary right now. Getting access to the Jumbo 64 is a pretty big deal for me, so we'll go ahead and grab that, and we may also want to grab, let's see, is there any additional science that we can get here? I mean, a weather analyzer, but this doesn't work on planets that don't have an atmosphere. We're not planning to go to planets with an atmosphere, at least for a good long time. Uh, relay antennas would be good, though our communication satellite. So we're going to go ahead and research that to grab our relay antennas. And then we're going to hop into the VAB. And we're going to build ourselves a communication satellite. And it's going to be based on the one that we've already done. But I mean, this is very low tech. Like very, very low tech. I'm in fact going to not base it on this at all. We're going to do a full new unit here. We're going to base it on, I think, the Probodobodyne Hex most likely. Let's see here. I just want to check the reaction wheel here. Yeah, the hex is a more powerful reaction wheel. So we're going to start with that. This is going to be a pretty light satellite. So we don't have the best for power generation. We need to get rid of that. There we go. We don't have the best for power generation, but we can do something kind of like this. I feel like that's overkill. So I'm going to bump it down to about four, and we would do that. I mean, eh, this is a little awkward for sure. <laughs> because, of course, this is hexagonal, which eh, we could do three. That could work. Something like that. That will provide power. And then we're just going to do like an inline battery here for when we're behind the planet, when we're occluded. And then we're going to put in a relay antenna on top of this, just a single relay antenna. There we go. Excellent. Now we're going to also include a thermometer, and that will be intended to complete science over the moon missions. So we're just going to grab the thermometer here. Two hot thermometer goes on. We only need one of them. We're going to put it there. And then on this side, we're going to put a mystery goo containment unit. Not because we want to use it, but because it is required by the contract. We need a mystery goo and a thermometer, so we need both of them. And we need to maintain stability and reach the designated orbit, has an antenna, and can generate power. So all of that is going to be completely fine. And we can, of course, science data from surface of the moon. That's going to finish from this satellite as well. We need to plant another flag on the moon, and that's something that we can do a little bit later on. And docking two vessels on or around Kerbin is also something that we will do, but not quite yet. So let's go ahead and put in like a, a, a T-400 is too much. We could do a T-200. Normally, if we had full tech, I would do ion propulsion for this. And that's something that we'll probably do a little bit later on. But for now, just putting like a, uh, a pug on here is probably just fine. Why do we have the center of thrust overlay on? There we go. Let's turn that off. So a pug should be more than enough propulsion for this. I just want to check the specific impulse. That's actually very similar to a Terrier. Does it have an alternator? No, but that doesn't matter. So that's fine. So this is our payload that we're going to deploy here. And we're just going to put in a TD-12 decoupler. And then we're going to put in a sort of maneuver slash circularization stage. This is just going to be a T-400. And we're going to have a Terrier. So that's going to be what delivers us to our position. And this might be overkill. If so, that's fine. We're going to then put in a TD-12. And as far as lifting this thing goes, can we get away with just like... 
Can we get away with just T-800s? And a swivel? Like, this is probably too little thrust to weight, right? Let's take a look at that. Swivel. There we go. So this thrust to weight would be, like, really low. Is my expectation. 0.87. That's not as low as I thought it would be, but that is pretty low. Okay, if we were to drop this stage... Actually, that might do the trick. So we just simply put on some winglets here. 1.13. So that's still low thrust to weight. One thing we could do is we could do an adapter and then make this be a much larger bottom stage. So like a fuel tank adapter would be what we would want. So like this guy and then this guy. So these are both fuel tanks and then they adapt it up to the larger stage. And then we just do like a single jumbo 64 like this. I like the big orange tank personally. So <laughs> we'll run with that and we'll make these kind of orangish as well. Actually, eh, no, I think I liked it better on the default. The coloration is a little awkward, but if we then ran a mainsail here, this would be wildly overkill, I think, on lifting capacity. It is. So we wouldn't want to have this, like, fully thrust here. We wouldn't want to have full thrust here, for sure. So we'll just go to around 65%, maybe? Like, this is overkill, for sure. Yeah, that's actually good. That'll do. So that gets us into orbit, and then this will be increased quite a lot once we're in orbit. If you look at stage two here, stage two would be around 2k delta V. So, I mean, that's more than enough. And then there's this stage up here, which is even more efficient. Now, we are going to want a fairing on this for sure. And I'm going to combine these stages together like so. That'll all be fine. I do also want to have some form of steering here. So let's take a look at our center of mass and our aerodynamic overlay. And then we would have like just winglets in 4X. Uh, that's quite low. Like that's very, very attached to the wings. Maybe we don't even need it. That's a possibility. So then we would drop this section here. Or actually, we would drop it here. And then we would want to have a fairing. So we'd go for like a 1.25 meter fairing. And we just do something kind of like that. There we go. This would be the ComSat Mark II. This should have plenty to get into where we want it to go. Like we could extend this very, very easily to put this over virtually anything. But I mean, look at this Delta V. It's already quite good. It'll get a lot better, but it's already quite good. I feel like we don't need aerodynamics. Let's go ahead and launch this. This is going to be an unsimulated launch. We'll see how it goes without without the winglets. It, it may fail. I think the odds of that are low. But if it fails, we'll call it lesson learned, and we will, uh, at that point, put them on. So let's, we'll throttle this up to full, which is what we need to hit that 1.6 thrust to weight ratio. We are thrust limited on this main sail, but we can adjust that. Okay. Let's go. Off we go. Nice and quick off the pad. And we're going to head on over here. Cool. And we'll just latch on to pro. Just trying to get a good amount of horizontal speed. This does appear to be a somewhat reasonable ascent trajectory. Cool. We're getting mostly altitude right now. Oh, right. We don't have a KER on this. That's fine. We don't actually need it. But I will drop this off and switch us over to maneuver mode so that we can actually see these numbers. Okay, our heading has drifted a little bit off of 90 degrees. We can try to pull that up a bit. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Just trying to correct our inclination here. Show me the advanced orbital info. Yeah, our inclination is now drifting the other direction. I overshot it. Okay. 
So let's just try to fix that a little bit. Three point three degrees and oh, we're overshooting it again. Okay, close enough. So our apoapsis is a hundred kilometers right now. We'll just go ahead and stop our burn and we will look to circularize this. So much easier with a mainsail, it's insane. <laughs> So we will position for that burn. We're going to be able to drop our fairing pretty soon. I usually like to manually deploy fairings. So we're going to drop that once we hit uh, 50 kilometers is actually fine. So we'll go ahead and ditch the fairing. We have a very, very hard time turning here. That's okay. We need to burn this at T minus 31 seconds, but that's not actually accurate. Once we dip out of the atmosphere, we'll know what the actually accurate sign or time for that burn is. But yeah, this is... This is a plenty powerful first stage. I like it. We're going to head out of the atmosphere in a moment here. I do want to take a look at our electric charge. Looks fine. Okay, 29 seconds. So T minus 14 and a half seconds is when we want to burn this. We'll just position for it. And of course, this will be a prograde burn. So I'm keeping it prograde for the time being. And we'll just warp towards that. T minus 14 and a half seconds. Okay, we actually overshot it a bit, but we'll just park right here. This is fine. I'm not concerned about overshooting it slightly. So we obviously had too much uh, vertical on that ascent. That's okay. I'm not too concerned about that either. We've got so much delta V in this thing. What is this thrust to weight? 1.37. Oh, wow. Okay, that's better than I thought it would be. Good enough. We're in orbit. It doesn't have to be perfect. We are, of course, heading for the moon, and this is the trajectory that we're looking for. We're heading this direction. So we're going to have to make sure that we're heading the correct way, but let's just go ahead and look to intercept the moon after about an orbit here. Yes, this should be fine. We're going to be coming in this direction, which is actually retrograde from where we want to. So we're going to need to flip that on around. Mm. We're going to have to change when this burn is occurring. That's pretty clear. Okay. A oh, spicy. Okay. So we're going to need to have this burn happen somewhere else. So somewhere around here after an orbit, perhaps. I wanted to add an orbit. It did not go. Add orbit. There we go. <laughs> Perfect. So if we look at this now, I mean, this is an escape trajectory, but that's fine. We're going to bring that on back. And this is going the correct direction. So that's good. We want to bring this periapsis down to be about the apoapsis. And I'd love to change this inclination as well. Do I have to burn radial to do that? No, that would be weird. Okay, we burn something like this. Bring it in like so. Yeah, that's more like it. So we're going to bring this back in to around here-ish. Ah, okay, I see what's going on here. So we're going to need to reduce this radial burn. Let's get that back to zero. There we go. That'll help matters. And overall, this is probably good enough. We know we're coming in the correct direction, so we can get this adjusted later on. It'll be a little easier to adjust it there. It's more efficient to adjust it here. That's for sure. But this is pretty close. So we'll call that good. We'll go ahead and position for it. And we know that we, we're not going to get any science from this flight, so that's fine. We will attempt, emphasis on attempt, to turn. It's not going very well, but we're slowly turning. <laughs> we're obviously, the reaction wheel on this is obviously not intended to turn this whole thing. Okay. We'll position here, and we'll just warp around to the actual point here. It's not going to be an entirely prograde burn, but that's okay. We want to burn this at T minus 
29 seconds would be when we'd burn this. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. So we're going to need to turn our way on over. We'll try to get there in time. Fingers crossed. If we don't, by the time this turns on, the gimbling on this engine is more than powerful enough to get us there. So that'll be fine. But yeah, we're going to be okay. T minus 29 seconds. And of course, this will burn out our entire first stage, but that's fully expected. Okay, we'll just hold here for the moment, and then we will start heading down just a little bit. There, that'll do. And we'll burn this at T minus 29. Hello, moon. And off we go. We're going to lose our first stage here. And off goes a little bit more maneuverable of a ship. <laughs> Excellent. Even this is more than enough Delta V to do what we need to. Like, this is overkill. We knew that that would likely be the case, but this is fine. Better overkill than underkill is my philosophy. Just adjusting our heading a little bit to better match the note. Now, this is a little bit interesting in terms of how it goes here, but that's fine. We have achieved escape velocity, and that's also okay. <laughs> this is not the most efficient approach. There's no doubt about that. But it's also completely fine. I'm not worried about it. We have so much Delta V. We'll call this good. How are we looking? Yes, this will be fine. We're going to need to make a few adjustments to it for sure. But we will go ahead and at this periapsis, our first adjustment will, of course, be a retrograde burn. Spicy. <laughs> this is a very inefficient way to do this. What happens if we just burn retrograde here? Uh, No, I'm not going to do that. We have enough Delta V to do it. I should have done this more efficiently. There's no doubt about it, but it's it's fine. It's okay. So we're going to bring it in around to here-ish, I think. Yeah, that'll be fine. We'll be able to match that fairly easily. Let's go ahead and move to the maneuver node. It's a burn time of 1 minute and 11 seconds, and we will burn out this entire stage doing this. That's, again, entirely okay. We have plenty of Delta V to make this happen. But yeah, we're definitely approaching this too quickly. This timing is not great. <laughs> That's for sure. Okay, let's go. So at T minus 35 and a half seconds is when we want to burn this. And we'll just go ahead and warp forward a little bit more. And we'll burn right about now. Okay. So this is going to burn off this entire stage. And I'm going to go ahead and physics warp this burn. It's going to be a bit of a long one. So this will be fine. We just want to go ahead and lock to retrograde. That's fine. Cool. There we go. And we will continue to burn here this last little bit. I still want it to be a retrograde burn. I don't care about this anymore. Okay. Our periapsis is very close there. It's not quite where I wanted it to be, but we're going to, at this location, burn our apoapsis out to where it needs to go. So that would be a small prograde burn out to about here. And then we can tweak that a little bit later. We're going to have to change our inclination. Obviously, we're a little off on that, but that's okay. We'll position for this burn. And we will go ahead and warp to that. This is only a five meter per second burn. Oh, I thought we were going this way for some dumb reason. But no, we're going the correct direction. <laughs> cool. So at this point, it doesn't really matter when we do the burn, in all honesty. We're just going to burn prograde here and push out that apoapsis out to that descending node. 
at the descending node, we're going to have to change 20 degrees. So we're going to burn, not that direction, the other normal. There we go. Okay, how are we looking there? Let's just line it up like so. Okay, then we're going to have to pull it back retrograde a little bit. We can do that at the same time. By doing something like this. A little bit more on the... Actually, a little less on the normal. There we go. That's probably close enough for contract work. Yeah. I'm going to call that close enough. That's 100 meters per second. And we're going to have to nail that burn pretty well, of course. But we'll just go ahead and position for it. There we go. And we will warp on over. It's going to be a 7 second burn. It's actually going to be a little longer than that. We're going to try to hit this burn pretty precisely. Okay. So we're going to warp forward to about T minus 3.5 seconds. And we're going to burn this. Now. We're going to slow down that burn a little bit, and we're trying to very precisely hit that. How's that? Yes, that counts. So now we need to hold stability for 10 seconds. And there we go. Contract complete. We've successfully deployed our satellite in orbit of the moon. Fantastic. And here's a question. Do we actually have a connection to our Probodobodyne experiment control station? Let's switch over to that. Our satellite should, I think, be in vision here. But it may be out of range. Nope, we've got a full connection. Fantastic. We're bounced through relay. Beautiful. That's exactly what we wanted because we can see that we're going to be completing some science here. And that should count towards science data from surface of the moon from right here. So that's great. Let's head on back to the Space Center now that we have that. And we're not going to have, like, 100% coverage on that. It's just going to be periodic coverage. But that's okay. So what's our next mission? That is a good question. Another one of those commsats in a specific orbit around Minmus, maybe? You know, honestly, we do need one around Minmus. So that wouldn't be the worst concept. We're going to go ahead and do that. I'm not sure if we're going to do that next. Science data from surface of the moon should automatically happen. We do want to do some docking in orbit. And we do need to plant another flag on the moon. But before we do that, I would like to have some additional tech here to drop on there like the uh we don't need a communitron but a passive seismometer we're not really going to get data from that per se so yeah that's all something to th think about our moon data is fairly limited i mean we could send the atmosphere up there anyway the atmospheric anal analyzing station up there anyway just to uh verify that there's no atmosphere it's not going to do anything but we could do that but i think for now all we need to do is we need to remove the if we open up the comsat mark 2 all we need to do is remove the mystery goo cont containment unit because the next contract doesn't actually need that so yeah putting this in orbit over minmus might actually be our next mission We'll see. It is about time to put a cut in here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, and next episode, we'll see what we feel like. It might be that, it might be docking, hard to say. You can leave your offerings to the Engagement Gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and I will see you all next time.